Got a Cal Ripken Jr. Career Highlights box set made by Fleer 20 years ago, back in 2001. They made 50,000 of these. This is number 26,110. And I've had it sitting around a little bit. Want to get it opened. Uh, the contents, you got 60 cards. 20 are reprint cards. I guess that's one per year of his career. You got 10 career highlights cards. 13 cards for The Streak, which was the, you know, all the games he played, uh, becoming the new Iron Man, breaking Lou Gehrig's record. And then you have 17 for the final season, which I'm guessing one of those is going to be, oh, we got 3,000 hits. So, crack it open here. See what we got in here. Break the seal. So I didn't have to cut it, just kind of slid right off. All right, so let me just open it. And 60 cards, a lot of them orange color with the Orioles to match, of course. So here we go. First one on the top, we've got the Rookie of the Year card. That's what it looks like. Old school Orioles uniform, logo in the hat. Love it. Looks like each card has the watermark there on the corner commemorating the collection from 1981 to 2001. This card's also a little bent. That's unfortunate. But it doesn't look like they're in any specific order. And what do you know? Here we go. The 3,000th hit one. That was at the Metrodome in 1999. Or sorry, 2000 actually. Sorry, 2000. April 15th. I was actually in attendance at that game. And I have a, still have my ticket stub with a certificate they were handing out on our way out from the game. And pretty memorable moment to be there as a, uh, I think I was 10 years old. And... So yeah, that's a good one right there. 400th home run. Then we have 91 All-Star Game where he was the MVP. I think a lot of these cards are just kind of... Uh, the, one, the first two or three had some indentations on the card. So in the box, I guess it wasn't the most... Uh, securely packed or maybe you know, the, some motion in there caused that I guess uh, we've got the 83-91 AL MVP when he won his two MVP awards I also like I like the black Orioles uniforms so I like the all blacks with the, the orange logo of course orange orange or black pretty strong uh, uh, complimentary colors there gold gloves 91-92 Then we've got a 19-time AL All-Star. So a lot of these commemorative cards. Um, you guys All-Star game statistics, two home runs, eight RBI, 13 hits, and 49 at-bats, and four runs scored. Pretty great career there. Only I think one season where he was not an All-Star. Uh, 14 straight All-Star starts, too. So he was... a uh, a regular starter in the All-Star game, not just uh, not just showing up. He was starting 15 times in a row. Career homers by a shortstop. At the time, he was definitely the biggest power hitting shortstop of all time. Until you got, you know, A Rod coming up. I guess was uh, we're gonna break those records. And then we've got whoop, eight Silver Slugger awards. This one's just called A Career Night, so let me read the back here. We've got a televised game against the Braves in 1999. He went six for six with two home runs, five runs scored, six RBI, and 13 total bases. So what a what a great game to air on ESPN there and really show off those hits. The All-Century team right there. 
So I've got a bunch here in a row. These are all the, the streak. So I guess those were the, where I just went through there, were the uh, career highlights cards. So there's 10 of those. So we got 10 career highlights that we just summarized there. Now the streak, the first game, May 30th, 1982. The first game of the streak. Not sure if that's gonna be focused. Should get a better camera. <laughs> uh, 1,000 career hits. 2,000 career hits. Sensing a theme here. Uh, nearly perfect, let's see. 90, in 1990, he almost had a errorless season. He had 681 total chances and just three errors. That set the major league record for fewest errors by a shortstop in a season. 99.6% uh, fielding. So quite the defensive shortstop there. Before uh, a couple years after that, he'd move on to third base. But he was still doing a great job at shortstop. Uh, tying Lou Gehrig with 21-30 career or starts in a row. Air free streak. So here's another uh, back to 90, and then I guess it continued in the next season. 96, or sorry, 95 consecutive games without an air, longest airless streak in American League history at the time. The new Iron Man, 2131. We'll picture him of him there. That was in 1995. And then a world record. You can go on to 22 15 straight games. Actually, oh, sorry, no, that was. There was a Japanese player, Sakiro. Kinugasa of the Hiroshima Carp. He played in 22-15 and then Ripken broke it with 22-16 in June 14, 1996 at Kansas City. And then the final game played in the streak was 1998. It was 2,632 games. It was 500 and more, or 501 more than Lou Gehrig. And he takes a much needed break there. He sits out a game. September 20th, 1998, a, a rest day for Rivkin. He was replaced by Ryan Miner in the season's next to last home game of that year. Father and son, you got Kyle Ripken and senior and Ripken junior. Also, don't forget Billy Ripken. Not sure if he'll make an appearance in this set. We'll see. I have my Billy Ripken card over there, the, the classic Ripken error card. And this one is just titled uh, 2000th Straight Game. So big numbers there on that streak. So that's the streak portion of the set. Now we get into the final season. And I like these because they're nice black border with the orange accent look very good these are, these are very nice designed cards I like what Fleeter did um, so here we go final season he had a home run in the 2001 all-star game I believe this is the one where uh, he was playing third base of course but then um, Alex Rodriguez and uh, motioned him over to shortstop to play shortstop for at least the first inning um, it was a pretty Pretty nice thing to do. Well received and you know, just, just honoring a, a great all-time player. Here's just the uh, he was MVP of the All-Star Game in 2001. His last hurrah. He would post a 15 game hitting streak in, in that last season. Pretty solid for a, he was what, probably 39, 40 years old at that point. 
back-to-back game-winning home runs. Those were on August 14th and 15th of 2001 against the Royals. Looks like it was in uh, Baltimore, too. I don't think they were in their home jerseys there. Um, career Achievement Award. A lot of accolades. I, think, I remember his final season was, I think, a year after uh, Tony Gwynn and Wade Boggs. There was, all three of them were going for 3,000 hits around the same time. It was a, it was a big, big push for them and uh, covered in the media. You look at the newspapers, you'd see their, their countdown to 3,000. I think, I think Boggs was the first... And then Gwyn, and then Ripken. Just how how it worked out, but uh, it was it was pretty exciting times. It was this is of course post home run race. We had the you know the home run race of the of 1998. This was a year or two after that, and you had these these iconic hitters from the 80s and 90s, and now wrapping up their careers in the late 90s. Um, having that 3,000 plateau was. A big milestone. Let's see the commemorative patch, which is the same logo on these cards here. I didn't realize that. So that happened in the final season of his career as well. 3,000th career game. It's a lot of games. Uh, final visit to Oakland. Let's see why this is important. The A's honored Ripken all three nights of the series. On Monday, they distributed replicas of. Ripken's rookie card and installed commemorative bases on on deck and on deck circles. On Tuesday, they gave out a replica card honoring Ripken's consecutive game streak. And then Wednesday's game, they let's see, they dedicated an inner city baseball field in Ripken's name. So, I guess Oakland you know, big fans of Ripken <laughs> seems a bit out of place, but uh, hey, it's cool stuff. The Canadian farewell. I guess kind of like how when Rivera, Marion Rivera was visiting all these places for the last time, they kind of gave a little thing for him. So I'm guessing it's probably the same because in the, Toronto, you had the same kind of thing with a farewell for the Blue Jays. And they gave out a, so a lot of memorabilia going out to the fans honoring him. So it's you know kind of odd you're going to a, a game for your home team and you're getting the opposing team's merchandise. <laughs> but when you have a player like Ripken Jr., it's of course uh, it's of course warranted. Uh, bye bye Boston. Fenway Park there. You know, waving the fans at Fenway. So you know places that he visited a lot, Fenway, Blue uh, you know, Toronto. Um, even with the that might have been a different division setup than it was uh, than it is today back then. And then one more of these for the final season. We've got uh, the Yankees, of course. Big, uh, big rivals there, Yankees. I'm not sure were the, were the uh, a- A's in their division too. I mean, that seems a bit out of place. I don't think so. I'd, I'd have to look back at 2001 uh, division settings, but I, I they, they must have been the West, if I'm, and they still are. So that's the the final season. We've got the last game. And these are nice. They got an orange border here with a black accent. Um, last game at third base right there. Let me get the glare. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Last at bat. Three thousand and one games played. So just over three thousand games. Just barely. Curtain. Not call. Cal. Curtain Cal. A nice uh, drive through the stadium. I don't know. It appears to be a 1950s era retro vehicle there. Automobile. And of course, retiring number eight. That was done right away, yeah. October 6, 2001. Number was retired. So you, most of the time it takes a couple of years from the retire number, but this one right at that last game. 2001. All right, so those are the kind of the category cards. These ones should be one from each year, and they're all in the Fleer style. So of course we've got the the classic, you know, uh, iconic rookie rookie card there, 
the flare rookie card. That's a good looking one. Good print. Um, as far as reprints go, you know, a little bit off. It's slightly to the left. So not really centered too well there, but not bad. You have the stats in the back there. He hit 128 his 1981 season in 22 games, but then would play all of the following year, 82. And I believe 82 was their championship season. That was his lone World Series uh, appearance, I believe, too, right? I've uh, got his sophomore season. It looks like a lot of these are kind of left off center, but this one as well. So here's his year two card. A nice looking card. I like that design. I think Fleer did a good job of designing cards. Um, this next one's a little bit different. Has its own little way of doing it. That is year three. Still shortstop at this point. Got a did you know question on the back of that. Year four, this is a good one. That's a great one. That's a great shot. Nice, nice close up. Turn batting practice probably. That's a good one. Year five, 1986. Another uh, pregame. I drum BP. Eighty-seven. We've got him in the dugout there with his glove, ready to go out in the field. I like, I like the color there, the blue at the top, and then how it fades into the white. Uh, this is this is a common rebrand they do all, all the time. The eighty-nine Fleer. That's a good style there with the with the. Vertical lines. Can't go wrong with that. 1990. This one's a little, little different. Maybe not my ideal preferred style, but it is where it is. Uh, here's the 90 years. This is uh, actually, so I guess I might have been mistaken. Are these out of order a little bit? I think they are. Yeah, I had my 89 and 88 mixed up. Let me fix that. Yeah, so here's 1990. There you have it. That's a good one. I think this is the Fleer that in the upper um, right corner. I remember that design a lot. Um, when I was a kid, I guess I must have been going through a lot of my, my dad's cards and just a lot of the Fleer 90. I was about four or five, six years old. I think I have a set of this, the, uh, the 91 Fleer, with that yellow border. That's a classic, very yellow. <laughs> uh, the 92 Fleer, this is a good one too. This one, you got a green. It fades into a white at the bottom there. That's a very, that's a good design too. Uh, that's probably the last one that has kind of that very thick border to it. I'm looking ahead here, a lot of these, these are all um, without without that frame setup that they've had for you know going on a long time. So here's the, this is 93. There you have a nice, uh, just image there takes the whole thing. It's it's uh, him playing shortstop, and I believe, and around this time he's going to be making that shift over to third base. But ninety three, he was still shortstop. Career totals at that point. Um, the back is kind of neat too. You got kind of a juxtaposition of a close up headshot there, and then him getting uh, him in the batter's box. So that's a, I just want to think that's relevant on the back. That's pretty good to share with you guys. 94 Fleer. This is 
doesn't say what position. Oh, here we go, shortstop. Yeah, so he's still shortstop here. It's kind of hard. It's in the upper right corner there. Ninety-five. We got shortstop again. There you have it. I like this. Look at this back here. The stats kind of overlaid over a picture. You get the logo. You got him winding up to make a throw to first base, most likely. So that's that's kind of a neat layout there. I don't like that one. That's a nice just back of the card there. Easy to read still because the all the stats are in a dark color. Doesn't have his whole career though. I feel like they could have put more in there, but maybe they didn't want to overload it with too much uh too much text. 96 Fleer. We've got <laughs> kind of a nice little headshot there. Just kind of, again, probably pregame warm ups, lounging around, looking very at ease. Probably right before uh, the game is about to begin. Final year at shortstop here in 97. And this was uh, commemorated as 96 All Star status. But there you have it, just taking that uh, hop step over to getting the ball to first. That's a good one. At this point, he would have 353 home runs. So here we go. The first year at third base would be the 98 season, right? So there you have a 98. I like the design on this one too. That's just the gold uh, really stands out. And then just again, these these pictures now taking up the whole card. There's no border, no framing. Just the edges of the card itself form that frame. Another condensed for actually no. Okay, it does have all, all stats here. Just didn't look like didn't look like it at first. He has fielding percentages on here too. That's pretty nifty. He had that, that 90 season where he had 99.6% fielding percentage. That was an incredible year. Couldn't ask for more of a shortstop than that. I mean, that's just literally almost perfect. Um, here we have another one. This oh, oh, let me go this way actually. <laughs> So third base, maybe at spring training there, it looks like. Signed some autographs. He was Ripken, great player, also definitely well known for being a fan, you know, a player for the fans, signing stuff uh, into the, you know, until, until there was no one left to, to sign for. He would definitely take that time to be with the fans. So through and through, just a great, great player for the fans. Here we have the 99 season, or sorry, 2000. There's 2000, batting helmet on, which is an interesting batting helmet because it doesn't have an ear protector on it at all. Interesting. Other pick, other, I mean, he, he wore that obviously, but you know, that's just for batting practice or something, I'm not sure. So at the end of the 2000 season, he'd have nine hits shy of 3,000. I'm sorry, at the end of the 99 season, he would have nine hits to go. So yeah, it took until April 15th. So the season had really just started about two weeks into the season. And he finally um, breaks that, that threshold of 3,000 hits. And then we've got... The final card, 2001 Fleer, a nice uh, dual headshot, action shot combo there. You got uh, not a lot on the back, kind of condenses the stats to just 91 to 2000. That's a little, that's a little sad. You, you, you'd think they would have put his whole career on there. That would have been nice for the, for the final season. 
what can you do? Um, had so 99 and 2000, only played about 80 some odd, 80 games and some change there, both seasons. So about half a season there for those two years. Only hit 256 in 2000, so that's when he was about to call it a career at that point, of course. So yeah, that is the that is the set. You've got the commemorative cards that really focus on certain aspects of his career. You've got I, I think they did a great job with these reprints here for every season. I like the you can kind of just see the evolution of the Fleer card over the years and how they made some pretty sweeping changes at times and um, other times kind of just stuck to really what they're what they were known for. But it's a it's a great set. Um, it was the box was about ten bucks on eBay. They made you know, they made fifty thousand of them. So there's, there's there's a lot of them. They're not particularly rare. Um, not gonna be something that's you know, worth a lot of money. Uh, but it's it's a nice set. Uh, if you're if you're a Calvin Junior fan, I think this is a good thing to add to your collection. Um, I gotta make me head over here and get another thing to show you. The Project 2020. We got the uh, Iron uh, Iron Man there, so it's uh, designed to be. It's got the uh, atomic symbol Fe, and I believe some other. So yeah, I like that card. That was a good one to get to the Project 2020 with a lot of different designs for lots of players. I did a good job with that and. This is something that, again, add to my Ripken Jr. collection. Um, so yeah, there it is. Uh, check it out on eBay if you want to get this box set. It, it, I think the only real complaint I'd have is a couple of these cards that I first opened had a little bit of uh, some some nicks on them. Some, uh, uh, you know, if you look closely here, this card. Let me try and get it at the right angle. Kind of right here, you've got a uh, bit of a crease in it. It's it's just from this is, this is the one that was on the top. So, but beyond that, they're in pretty you know they they were shipped pretty well. It's just in a block in a box and not much to it. But we have a couple cards that were um, not a hundred percent, but they were uh, these were the achievement set of the card so but yeah it's a good set i would i'd recommend it 10 bucks uh good thing to add to your collection and uh just check and see if they're available on ebay I think when i got it um there was plenty of it wasn't like there was a lot uh um or there was, there was it was scarce at all it was there's was a lot to pick from and play about 10 bucks for it that's what i did and as long as you're not paying more than that you should be getting a good deal so uh, there you have it